So I, I'm avoiding this morning to say good morning because uh, I'm devastated by the loss of my friend, Mr. Oliver, who is actually a very close friend of mine. Actually, I had called him, uh, I wanted to meet him this Tuesday, uh, but he was uh, he was not present at work, so I couldn't be able to meet him. And uh, he has also been training my, my daughter how to swim. But I thank God, he was a soft-hearted person, always smiling. I've never seen Oliver uh, uh, in a moody or uh, or foul mood. Never, never, never. But we thank God for the time that he gave us. With him, we pray that he may rest his soul in peace. So, in this topic, I'm going to teach you about network management and operation and maintenance. So every time you see O and M, know that it stands for? It stands for what? Operation and maintenance. In fact, as a junior network engineer, these will be one of your main job description, operation and maintenance. And that's why this topic is very practical and very important for you. So you need to know how networks are monitored and how they are maintained. So the forward, the ever-expanding network and increasing network devices present a significant challenge in managing networks effectively and providing high-quality network services. There are many network management and operation uh, 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 operation and management methods, of which this course describes some of the most common. So we're going to describe about three. <clears throat> so by the end of this chapter, you should be able to, uh, Maurice, you can help us read them out. Yeah, I can help. Um, the first one, I hope you can hear me. You're loud and clear. Am I audible enough? Yes, yes, Thank yes. You. And be able to you'll be able to understand the basic concepts of network management and uh, OEM. Mm -hmm. Sorry, O O and M. Most o and of the M. Company, we call it OEM, operation and maintenance. That is. Oh. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, number two, you'll be able to master common network management and uh, O and M methods. That is operation and maintenance methods. Mm -hmm. Describe basic function uh, functions of network management and operation and maintenance. Mm -hmm. Understand the fundamentals of uh, SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocols. Yes. Uh, understand uh, Huawei, iMaster, NC, and uh, related technologies. technologies. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we begin by looking at the basic concepts of network management operation and maintenance. So O and M plays an important role on a communication network. It ensures that devices work properly and communication networks run properly to provide efficient, reliable, and secure communication services. Now normally, 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 uh, an enterprise network must have must have a techie called a network administrator who's going to be monitoring, maintaining, uh, and maintaining the network. Now, this particular network administrator uses a device we call a network management system, NMS. Now, really, the NMS is not just the device, network management system. It's not just the device, but it is the device and the software that is used to monitor and manage the network. Now, these particular devices, for example, switches and routers, switches and routers that are monitored and maintained are called network elements commonly abbreviated as NE, NE, 
network elements. Please remember that a network management system is not just the hardware, not just the PC, but also the software that is used, okay? Now, uh, uh, network management, operation and maintenance is classified into two. The first classification is what we call software management. The second classification is what we call hardware management. Now, software management is uh, concerned with uh, managing things like the user, user accounts. Uh, user accounts, configuring the, uh, uh, the read and write permissions. That is really authorization and things like that. So that is what we call software management. On the other hand, Hardware management is concerned with uh, managing the network elements themselves. So the firewalls, like here, like here we're having the firewalls at the egress, at the core layer, the switches, layer three switches, and also the layer two switches. So that is hardware management. Uh, now, this particular topic will focus on hardware management. This topic will focus on hardware management. Okay. So we have uh, basic network management functions. They are classified into basic network management functions. They're classified into five different uh, models. Uh, the first one is called configuration management. The second one is called performance management. Then we have fault management. Then we have security management. And lastly, we have accounting management. So even from the name, uh, some of them you can already tell what it's concerned with. So configuration management, this is when you want to configure uh, for example, a particular interface or a particular protocol. You want to configure an IP address or you want to configure OSPF or FTP. So that is what you call configuration management. So normally, when you do configuration management, you normally use what you call queries uh, in order to either modify the hardware or software running parameters. Mm -hmm. Then performance management, we know, we know that uh, 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 the network elements have CPUs, they have memories, uh, they also have interfaces, and sometimes you just want to know, for example, how busy is the CPU, how busy is the RAM, do we have congestion on particular interfaces, so that is what we call performance management. Fault management is identifying faults and rectifying faults as soon as possible. That is what we call fault management. Then we have security management. So this protects networks and systems from unauthorized attacks, access and attacks. And lastly, accounting. So accounting is what we learned in AAA, monitoring and recording uh, what people access, authorized, authenticated and authorized uh, people, access how long they spend, and what they do really to the network elements. So those are the basic network management functions. Now we have uh, we have uh, two network management modes. The first one is called traditional network management. The other one is whereby we use a centralized and specialized device to manage the network. So this centralized device. Huawei have a product called iMaster NCE. So we have traditional and we have that. So you, you need to understand both of them. Now, when we are using traditional, when we are using traditional uh, methods to manage the network, we can do so in uh, one of three ways. One of three ways. So look here. The first one is by using a web system. 
by using a web system. The second one is by using the CLI, the command line interface. And lastly, you can use a protocol called SNMP in order to offer centralized management. So how does the web system work? Now, generally, these network elements, whether they're routers or switches, network elements come with, they come with a web uh, uh, configuration, or what can I say? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they act as web servers. So they come with web pages within them that you can use to configure certain parameters in them. Are we together? So that means that you can be able to connect to a particular network element and access a particular web page that is stored in that particular network element and be able to do configurations on that particular device. Is that clear? Yeah. And uh, that is something that we've done on the routers that we have with Kellen, and she's going to take you through. I'm going to tell her to prepare so that next week she takes you through how to, how to connect to a router, how to connect to a switch using the web interface. Okay? Now, the other way is what you've been doing, for example, in the labs. You've been using the command line, the command line interface the command line interface. When you're using the command line interface, you're either connecting to the network element using a console cable. Are we together? But if you're dealing with a live network, then you can use, for example, SSH to telnet into the device and be able to configure it. Are we together? So those are the two ways in which you can do it. What's the main difference between the web Interface and the CLI, other than the web is a GUI and CLI is character user interface. Anyone who can remember, I think we, we mentioned this at the beginning. Especially in terms of the amount of um, configurations that you can be able to do. Where can you be able to do more configurations? On the web or on the CLI? on the CLI, right? Yeah, so on the web, you can only be able to do limited, limited amount of configuration. But CLI, you can be able to do everything. So uh, that is what happens. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, whenever you're using the web system mode or the CLI mode, really, it's a one-to-one -one management. That is, you have to log in to each device in order to be able to manage it or monitor it. Are we together? It's one-to-one. -one. So you are the network administrator, you have a machine, then you log into that particular device through the web or through the CLI. On the other hand, we can deploy a network management system. When we deploy a network management system, then this particular device, which is either a laptop or a desktop computer, you can install a specialized software that is used to centrally manage your network. That software, for example, for Huawei, is called eSight. It's called eSight. Um, we don't cover eSight here, but you can check my, I think in, in R&S, version 2.5, there, there was a whole topic on eSight. So you can go and check. Otherwise, if you don't get it on HCIA, then I've also taught it on HCIP. So it's called eSight. So we install eSight. We install eSight on this machine. Now, eSight <clears throat> we uses a protocol called SNMP. Is this the first time you're meeting this protocol? This protocol is called Simple Network Management Protocol, SNMP. Are they, so far, how are the acronyms, uh, how are the acronyms uh, coming up? Are you enjoying learning all these acronyms? <laughs> so 
in networking we have so many acronyms so many and you have to know all of them there are so many <laughs> okay so snmp simple network management protocol so normally when you're using this mod then you can be able to access all these devices and configure them through for example a single web interface normally they offer a web interface where you can be able to monitor their performance or configuration parameters and all other things so that's what we call the uh, 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 snmp based centralized management so it's it's advantageous because it's not one to one like this one so this one this one web system and cli you only use it if the network is small otherwise as the network expands then it's going to be uh, uh, quite uh, uh, untenable to use those methods if the network is a little bit bigger then please use use uh, uh, an snmp based centralized management mode otherwise if your network is large really large then the solution you should pursue is using a centralized device to manage your network that device for huawei is called iMaster nce iMaster nce so iMaster nce provides network automation it provides network automation uh, and network intelligence so it's able to collect it's able to collect data from the network analyze the data that it has collected and be able to report or even change or even change uh, 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 what is supposed to be changed for the network to continue working properly so that is what we call network automation network automation now nc uh, i master nce uses another protocol that is uh, a, the brother and the advanced version of snmp in fact this protocol was just made a standard a few years ago both these protocols have been developed by iatf the internet engineering task force so the the protocol that is now slowly replacing snmp is called netconf netconf really is network configuration protocol netconf so this one uses netconf rather than rather than rather than snmp okay so we're going to see how how netconf works in a short while so let's look at uh, the traditional network management and how it is done so management through cli and web based so management through through the CLI or web based. So when the network scale is small, CLI and web based are generally used for network management. So network scale is small. Mm. So here, network administrators will be able to log in to the device through HTTPS or Telnet or the console port in order to manage the device. Mm. Now these network management modes do not require any program that one is very important these modes do not require any program or server to be installed on the network therefore what is the advantage for that the cost is low so network admins must have a good master of network knowledge eh? you must remember the uh, the configuration commands Mm. Uh, and also vendor specific vendor specific network configuration commands because as you manage this as you manage this network as a network administrator you will have a firewall from huawei uh, maybe an access controller from cisco maybe a router from juniper uh,
Okay. So maintaining this network can be a little bit complex, complex, complex. Mm -hmm. Okay. So SNMP based centralized management. So here, as we've said, uh, SNMP is simple network management protocol. It's a standard management protocol widely used on TCP IP networks. It provides methods for network elements, NEs, through a central computer that runs network management software. Network management software. Mm -hmm. That is a network management station. So NMS, network management station, this one. So as we have said here, uh, this network management station is going to exchange SNMP packets with the network elements. Then you as the network administrator, you'll have a web interface, for example, where you can be able, you can be able to perform what? One to, one to many management. The previous one, it was one to one. Advantage of this one over the previous CLI and web-based this one is one to many. Mm -hmm. So you can use the NMS to query information, modify information, or troubleshoot faults on any node on the network. Therefore, this method improves the work efficiency. Uh, now, look at another advantage when you're using that. Network devices of different types and vendors are managed in a and manage in a unified manner. So normally, for example, for eSight, you can be able to use eSight uh, to monitor and configure devices from other vendors. Is that clear? Yeah, so you, you don't have to have a network that is having devices just from a single vendor, no. You can use eSight to help you do that. Now, SNMP, has evolved over the years. Uh, and we have the following SNMP. We have the following SNMP versions. The first one is called SNMP V1. And this is a very common question in the exam. We have SNMP V2C, C, and we have SNMP version three. V3. So of course, in the exam, they'll add SNMP, SNMP V2. And then they'll tell you which one among the following is not, which one among the following is not a version of SNMP. So remember version two is version two C. It's not just version two. Okay, so as I said earlier, all these protocols have been, uh, uh, it's the work of IATF, Internet Engineering Task Force. And uh, as we go on, you're going to learn about the difference, the difference of these particular uh, protocols. Uh, generally, um, or maybe in summary, uh, version one, version one was not able to do what we call batch configuration. You have to do a single configuration at a time. So version two C introduced batch configuration, whereby you can be able to do multiple configurations at a go. And then version one and version two did not provide for security. That is authentication and encryption. So Version three, version three provides for authentication and encryption. Okay. So typical SNMP architecture. So this is the typical SNMP architecture. Now, uh, here, here you have two devices. You have the network 
management system you have the network management system then you have what you call the managed devices now the managed devices the managed devices are the routers the switches and any other thing that you can be able to uh, 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 monitor on the network uh, so those are the managed devices managed devices they are managed by the nms on the network mm. now your network management system is going to provide you a user interface so that's what we're calling a monitor so this is you the client so provides a visual a visualized interface now two things that you're not supposed to forget here the nms the nms runs what we call a network management process a network management process now it is this network management process that communicates with what we call the agent process of the managed device so the managed device runs what managed device runs the agent process the nms runs the network management process so the the agent process runs on it runs on the managed devices to maintain the information data of the managed devices and to respond to the request of the nms and report the management data to the nms that sends the request so that is the purpose that is the purpose of the agent process So normally here so normally here you are using a web you're using a web interface to be able to monitor and manage these devices uh, of course here these the, the network management process and the agent process they communicate using what snm snmp they communicate using SNMP, so don't forget that. Okay. Oh. Okay, so let's see the SNMP message exchange process. Now, the most important thing here to remember is what we call a managed object. Now, your managed device, which for example is a router, has many, many, many managed managed objects what is a managed object a managed object can be a hardware component or a set of parameters that is configured on the hardware or software so the ip address of your interface or a particular protocol like ospf or snmp ftp telnet etc so all those things that we can be able to configure on our network element those things individual things they are what we call managed objects managed objects now <clears throat> uh, what happens is this uh, your nms is going to send a query or modify request so that is what we are seeing here in step number one so it's going to send then the agent process is going to respond with a query or modify response so that's how they communicate mm -hmm. hey change this ip address to this then this one says okay i have changed are you getting the point are we together yeah then the managed device can also send what you call a trap a trap that is it can proactively report an error to the nms so that the network administrator can detect faults in a timely manner so that is what we call a trap 
have experienced a problem, for example, this managed object, which is an interface G001, it has experienced a fault. It has gone down. So I have to report to the NMS, hey, G001 status, uh, administrative status, for example, has changed from up to down. So that's what we call a trap. Is that clear? Okay. <clears throat> now, oh, something I didn't say here. <clears throat> Excuse me. SNMP uses MIBs, management information bases, to describe a group of objects of a manageable entity. An MIB, management information bases. Yes, Maurice, you raised your hand. <coughs> yeah, yes, teacher. I also want to be just to say something. Eh? Yes, please add. In regards to in regards to the managed services, um, is it also correct to say that uh, under managed services, mm. in terms of uh, now on a higher level, mm -hmm. should I call it on a higher level? Yes. That you can also still monitor, like me, mm -hmm. me as in my industry that is telecommunication. Yes. Um, you can monitor a certain port, uh, the, 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 uh -huh. um, the amount of traffic going through a certain port, maybe yes. the threshold that you yes, set yes. to a certain port. Yes. Maybe it's actually bottling, um, throttling, or whatever changes that you might need to, to, to take, actually. Uh -huh. These are some of the parameters that we end up actually uh, getting in terms of monitoring. Very correct. Very correct. So you can monitor the traffic that is on a particular interface see how, how much bandwidth is being used, how much has remained, and you can actually be able now to modify and be able to do things like throttling, as you say. So that is very correct, sir. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so an MIB, Management Information Base, eh? simply put, is a database containing variables that are maintained by a managed device. Now, this particular database normally adapts a tree-like structure. So at the very top of the tree, we have the root. Now, as we go down, as we go down, each, each variable, for example, ISO, so you can only be able to access certain vi variables that are under other variables. So for example, ISO has an ID of one. Then org has an ID of three. So you can go like that down the MIB tree until, for example, you get to an interface. And an interface, we also have G001, we have G002, G003. So are you seeing how it's structured? So that's what we call an MIB, database containing variables that are maintained by the managed devices. So these variables can be queried or set by the agent process. So we can query this particular interface to find out the IP address. Or we can uh, send a modify request in order to change the of that particular interface. Okay, I think my mic experience problem. Now it. Okay, just a moment, I sort it out. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so um, the MIB defines attributes of managed devices in the database. Such attributes include the OID, object identifier, OID. So the object identifier, like one, three. So if you want to get, for example, to DOD, it will be 1.3.6. That will be the OID. Status of the object, for example, is it up, is it down? Uh, access permission, are you allowed to access it? And what can you be able to do? Read, write, or just read only, and so on and so forth. Then data types of an object. Those are some of the... Uh, attributes or parameters that are defined by an 
MIB. MIB provides a structure that contains data on all NEs that may be managed on the network. So because the data structure is similar to a tree structure, the MIB is also called an object naming tree. An object naming tree. Now generally, we have uh, two types. We have two types of, and I hope you understood this point, eh? that for example, to get to this interface, the OID is gonna be, it's gonna be what? 1.3.6.1.2. Okay, how come? Dot one, dot two, like that. So that's how the OID for this interface is gonna be defined, okay? So this this example here actually is the is the OID for this object for the management there. But if it's for this one, it's gonna be the two and the two like that. Okay. Now uh yes Maurice. Sorry teacher, will you just repeat that again? Because I just wanted to confirm okay. where are you logging in from? Huh? If you have to use the IDs as you've said, is it from the root or from the interface down here? Uh okay. Uh, uh what what I mean is that for the OID, which is the object identifier of any object. So for example, we have this object, which is the interface. You have to begin from after the root. So we have this one ISO, for example, which has a value of one. So one, then dot, the next one is OG, three, then dot six, then dot one, then dot two, then dot one, then dot two. So this is the OID of this particular object called interface here. That is the object identifier for that. So when, um, when the agent process uh, wants to find out the IP address of a particular interface, it's going to identify that interface using this OID. Are you getting the point? Yeah, I get you, I get uh, you. Uh, so if for example, it's 001 and the, uh, the ID of that object here is one, then it's going to be that, 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 and then dot one again. So that's how we are able to identify a particular, a particular object that we want to query or modify. Okay, thank you. I want to okay. Now we have two types. We have two types of MIBs. Two types of MIBs. Uh, the first one is called public. Public. MIBs. The second one is called private MIBs. Now, generally, public MIBs are used to structure, they are used to define the structure of MIBs for public protocols. Public protocols. So public protocols such as OSPF, uh, FTP, and so on and so forth. So those public protocols are structured. Their MIBs are structured by the public MIBs. Otherwise, if you create your own protocols, such as the Huawei Terminal Access Server, Access Control uh, Control Server that we saw the other day, then you need to define its own M MIB or how to reach to it by using a private MIB. A private MIB. So really private M MIBs are simply used to enable SNMP to be able to manage those private protocols. Are we together? And they are called priority, uh, uh, proprietary, eh? proprietary protocols. Are we together? Mm, private protocols proprietary. Otherwise, the other ones are called open protocols or public. Okay, so uh, uh -huh. uh, 
common MIB objects. So objects, hi, and do. Objects used for query or modification. So the first example we're going to see is an object that is used for query or modification. The next we are going to look at is an object that is being used for alarm notification, alarm notification. So objects that are used for query or modification, they'll be defined number one by the OID, object identifier. Then they'll also have a, an interface name. For example, if number, it's, it means it's an interface. It's an interface. Mm. This one here, uh, I think is hardware network mask. Mm. Then the data type. So the data type for the interface is gonna be an integer. For this one is an IP address. Then maximum access. So the maximum access can be, for example, read only. We all understand what read only means? It can also be read, create. So read only means you can only read the information, but you can change it. Are we together? The other one that is available is read write. So read write means you can read it and you can also change it. You can modify it. Then we have read create. Read create, you can read it, you can modify it, you can add other configurations, and you can delete the configurations that you've added. So that is read create. You can add configurations and you can delete configurations. Then the other one, the other uh, maximum access type is called not accessible not accessible not accessible means no operation can be performed so we have not accessible and we have read write so there are four read only read create not accessible and read write then of course we have the description so for example for if number this is the number of network interface in the system regardless of the status then this one is the subnet mask of an IP address. Okay, so you can see how that database looks like. Eh? So a database is simply a table that is storing information in a certain way. Okay, then we have this one for alarm notification. So alarm notification is what we call trap. Trap. Uh, now, for example, here, we are sending a link down trap. So link down means it is detected that one of the communication links in the if operation starter object has entered the down state from another state, but not from this present state. So the original state is indicated by the value of if operation starters. So link down, link down uh, means that the link has gone down and with uh, with uh, this kind of uh, with this kind of notification alarm notification you can be able to send more than one variable type you see during query and modification we only send a single uh, variable type for example integer or ip address here you can be able to send a number you can be able to send the interface index which is the number of that particular interface, like 001 or 002. You can be able to send the admin, if admin status, which is the administrative status of the, of the interface. Is it up, is it down? So when you send a one, it means you've shut down that particular interface administratively. Administratively means you've used the command shut, shut down, to shut it down. Mm. Then we have if, Operation status mm, indicates that the current operating status of the interface, that is the link layer protocol status of the interface. Okay, uh, Maurice, sorry about that. Oh, we also yeah, have Dennis I, around. 
Where, where did you lose me at? <laughs> My internet had a... Uh... Uh, I lost... Huh. Yeah. And where? I'm also the host, so let me make you the host, I think. Um... Oh, okay, okay. Please make me the host so that I can be able to record, by the way. Yeah. Sorry, my internet went down. There you go. Um, I just lost you from wherever where you were actually explaining on mm. Uh, mm. The, the, the alarm notification. In fact, I was about to ask a question. What type of notification are we talking about? Is it a visual notification or um, a notification via something else like mobile phone or whatever? Okay. So, uh, I think... When you talk about uh, the network management uh, system, you'll see that you can either get a visual notification through the web, through color codes, sound, etc. But you can also configure it to send you SMS notifications. So for service critical uh, or the critical service network infrastructure, normally you configure even SMS notification. So that- Depending on the severity. Yes. So that you depending can depending on the severity that is yeah depending on the severity so you can also be able to send different different levels of severity and therefore different levels of notification or types of notification so that is very correct okay so i was just talking about the alarm notification and i was saying for example that here we have a link down notification that is used to notify to notify the nms if a link goes down, if a link goes down. So some of the variables that are sent along that is the interface number, if index, this one here, if index, that's the interface number. Then the administrative status. Administrative status is whether you've shut down uh, that interface using the shut command or the operation status. The operation status is the link layer protocol status of the interface. Have you configured an IP address? So we know that we have admi administratively down or protocol down or something. So you've not configured an IP address or something or it has changed like that. Then description, the interface description. For example, I've connected this interface to the core router. That's the description. Okay. Have I ever shown you how to? Have I ever shown you how to how to configure a description on an interface, or have you done it in the lab? Huh? You've not done it. Okay. You just use the you just use the description command. So if you've gone into G zero zero one. If you've gone, for example, into G001, so for example, you are in R1, G0.0.1, like that. So we have a command called description. Description, then you can say, for example, connected, connect, connect, connected to G03 of the core router, R3, for example, like that. So that's the command for, that is the command for entering the description of an interface description. You can try it when you have uh, time. Okay, I'm not sure why my microphone is misbehaving like this. <clears throat> you can still be able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's move on a little bit quicker now. SNMP managed model. So as we said, you can either do a, a modify operation you can be able to do a quantify operation.
just a moment. I'm waiting for this to disappear. Mm -hmm. Hi. Please give me a minute. I try and sort this. Okay, can you be able to hear me, Maurice? Yeah, we can be able to hear you. Okay, so let me just use my laptop mic. Okay, yeah. so the NMS, the NMS will send to the SNMP a request message to the urgent process using SNMP. NMS will send using SNMP a request message to the urgent process. Then the urgent process will do what? It will search the MIB on the device for information that has been queried, uh, queried or modified. Then what will the, then send an NSM, SNMP response message to the NMS. So that is how it operates. That is how it operates for query and modify. So that is what we are saying. Ah, we are actually going to do it. We're actually going to do it in the next few slides. Then for the trap, for the trap message, what happens? If the trap triggering condition defined for a module are met, look here, trap triggering condition, trap triggering condition. So what can be a trap triggering condition? It can be like if CPU is at 80, percent uh, for more than five minutes then send send an alarm are you getting the point so that is what we call a trap triggering condition so if the trap triggering condition is defined for a particular module then the agent process will send a message to more notify the NMS that an event or trap has occurred on a managed object. So this helps network administrators to promptly process network faults. So that is what we, we, we call a trap, okay? So let's see how SNMP uh, version one works. So, yes, Maurice? So there's Maurice? so many questions I have today. Okay, no problem, no problem. Yeah, you can you hear us? Many. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Just want to know: is it also is it is it also uh, um, right to say that uh, you can do multiple uh -huh. um, SNMP traps, that is uh, um, the alarm creations yes. on multiple devices? Yes. Or you have to do it one after. You just do one command, then you apply to, to the rest of the devices on the network. Oh, I get, I get what you're asking. I think through eSight, you can be able to do that. You can be able to set common alarms for particular devices, similar devices. So you can be able to deploy the same alarm conditions for uh, certain devices. You can actually be able to do that on eSight. That means that you can apply one command Yes. To a certain number of devices that you've selected on the network. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's look at how SNMP version 1 works. SNMP version 1 uses one of uh, five packet types uh, to uh, achieve its operation. The first packet type is called GET request. Mm, here they're just naming it as GET. Let me, let me just type them here. So number one, we have get request. It's important that you, rem you remember them. Number two, we have get next. Get next request. Request. Number three, we have set request. Then number four, we have response. And lastly, we have drop. 
So SNMP version one uses this file. So let's see how. So for example, the NMS sends a GET request asking what is the IP address of G001. So the agent process on the managed device is going to search the MIB and respond with a with a with a response this one here with number four with packet number four response and send the IP address mm -hmm. okay so response and the IP address then uh, if there's another information that the NMS needs, for example, the IP address of G002, then it's going to send which packet? Packet number two here. Get next, request. Then again, manage device will respond with a response and the IP address of G002. Otherwise, if we want to change the IP address of G003, for example, to this IP address, then we use the set request. So set like that. Then this one is going to reply with a response saying setting succeeded. Now, in case, for example, we have configured a condition here, uh, for example, when the CPU usage is too high, we want to get a, 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 an alarm notification. So that is what we call a trap. CPU usage is too high, we send a trap. So that is packet number five. Hello, teacher. Yes. Your internet seems to be not stable. Oh, 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 you're losing me, eh? Losing you. You're breaking actually at some point. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm actually tethering. Uh, okay, let's just keep monitoring it. If uh, it doesn't change, let me know so that I can I can change to another one. Okay, so where where, where did you lose me? Anything you want me to repeat here? No, it's okay. It's only that uh, you are having uh, you are having what you call you are lagging actually. Okay. Uh huh. Yes. So you think you don't really get to you see, I want you to understand. Okay. Uh, if, I'm, if I've gotten your question correctly, you're saying for you to use get next or for you to use set. Yes, Oh, get next. Uh -huh. get, get next. Uh -huh. You must have several managed devices. Okay, the answer is no, because for example, here, we just have one managed device. But you know that one managed device has several managed objects, right? So for the first one, we are using, we want to manage G01. Then we want to manage a different managed object on the same device. But for you to use get next, you must have used at least the get request. Okay. Okay, version two, version two, SNMP version 2C. Let me say 2C. Now, 2C, uses the five packets of SNMP version one and introduces another packet called the get bulk request packet. Get bulk request. Get bulk request packet is used to query, for example, IP addresses of all the interfaces on the device. Get bulk. So other than doing uh, requests for each managed object, we can do requests for multiple managed objects. So that is what a get bulk packet is used for. Then when you send a get bulk, you get a response and the response has the IP address of all those interfaces. Otherwise, 
version 2c also introduces another new packet called the inform packet inform now the inform packet is used to send traps is used to send traps just like just like in uh just like in version one of course we still have traps so you might wonder then why do we need inform now the main difference between inform and trap is that for inform it sends proactively it sends proactively uh, uh traps to the nms mm -hmm. so uh, uh the other difference between trap and inform is that inform requires it requires a response it requires a response from the nms and like the inform requires a response unlike trap which does not require a response so that's another that's another question you should expect in the exam mm -hmm. which among the following packets is used by snmp v2c mm -hmm. to send trap messages so of course on the option you'll have trap and you'll have inform so make sure you select inform are we together okay so snmp version 3 as i said uh the only advantage of this one is that it introduces uh it adds a header it had a header for data and security parameters so here you can be able to authenticate the source and you can also be able to encrypt the data as you're exchanging it between the nms and the managed device and so when the nms sends a query or a modify request it has to be authenticated so authenticates all exchange messages and encrypts messages mm. now normally version version 3 is used for networks that are big and have high security requirements high security requirements otherwise the other two do not offer security and therefore should be used with caution so snmp summary uh when you get time i want you to go through it but most of the things are the things i've said but just snmp advantages simplicity is one of them simplicity because uh, it is uh, low cost because it uses the polling mechanism, provides network management functions. Uh, then it also uses UDP to exchange data. Therefore, uh, it is supported by most products. The other advantage other than simplicity, convenience, convenience. So it allows management information exchange between devices on a network. So that a network admin can query information and locate faults on any device so it really simplifies uh, network management <clears throat> configuring snmp is easy uh, i'm just surprised that we don't have a lab for configuring uh, snmp but uh, in routing and switching version 2.5 we had a lab for this so if you want you can check on my youtube channel or refer to the notes did I give you the notes for version 2.5? Routing and switching. And you also need it so that you can explore some of the technologies that were expunged from this one. Okay, so you have to enable the SNMP agent by using the command SNMP hyphen agent. Then the SNMP version, how to do that? SNMP agent, sys info version, then you can enter v1 v2c or v3 uh, you can configure snmp version as required however the protocol version used on the device must be the same as that used on the this is important protocol version used on the device must be the same as that used on the what nms 
Okay, then you can create an MIB or update an MIB view using this command. I won't go uh, much into it. You can add an SNMP group and map user in that particular group using that command, which you should also get time and look at. Okay, um, SNMP group, password, uh, encryption password. If we are using version three, so these are just for version three. Eh? All these things you, you're doing here, they're just for SNMP version three because they are things to do really with authentication. Oh, trap parameter, look here. How to set trap, send traps. So SNMP agent target host trap parameter S name. So you give it a name, then V3 security name, security name. Then you can use authentication, no authentication, private or privacy. Uh, by default, by default, traps are not uh, enabled. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to enable traps, you need to use SNMP agent trap enable for the device to be able to send uh, alarm notifications. Okay. Then you also need to configure the source interface that sends the trap. So the command to do that is SNMP hyphen agent trap source, then the interface type and the interface number that is going to send out the trap to the NMS. So this is an example. This is an example of how to configure SNMP version three. So uh, the requirements, we want to enable SNMP on R1 then set SNMP version to SNMP version three, then set the SNMP group name to test, encryption authentication mode to privacy. Then we create SNMP user, name that one, uh, authentication and algorithm and encryption. We set it to that, the password. Then we create a trap parameter named param and set security name to sec. We also need to set the IP address of the target host on R1 and enable the trap function and specify this interface as the source interface to send traps. So to do that, we begin by enabling the SNMP agent using the, so that, that is R1, R1, using the command SNMP, this is R1, SNMP agent. Then we specify the version as version three, then security, privacy. Then we create the user and the password. Then after that, we can uh, specify the security name and the password again. Then we can specify the NMS address using that command. Then we can specify the source address, trap source address. Then we can enable traps using this command, SNMP agent trap enable. So it's gonna ask us, do you want to do this? Yes. Why and then enter. Okay. So let's look at how to use, uh, how to use the iMaster. So with the advent of 5G and cloud era, innovative services such as virtual reality and augmented reality, live streaming, autonomous driving are emerging. And the entire ICT industry is booming. So at the same time, the traffic of the entire network also increases explosively. So Huawei Global Industry Vision predicts that the amount of new data will reach 180 zettabytes. Uh, have you ever heard of this, by the way? ZB. Have you ever heard of it? Huh? Have you ever heard of zettabytes? <laughs> zettabytes. Z, Z, zettabytes. 
zettabyte is 1 billion terabytes or 10 raised to the power of 12 GB. Zettabyte. So it's going to get or reach to 180 zettabyte by 2025. Moreover, the dynamic complexity of services makes the entire network more complex. So such challenges can only be overcome by constructing, by constructing what? Automated and intelligent network systems centered on user experience. So you can see traditional networks are overloaded. You see, this lorry is crying and it's not very happy. <laughs> because the new services are too heavy, too heavy, too heavy. They're too heavy. Autonomous driving. But the tires are still uh, having pressure, enough pressure to carry it on. <laughs> but you, lose, you, you, you are on the risk of busting them also. <laughs> so that is network congestion. <laughs> Okay. Uh, by the autonomous driving, uh, when do you think it will get to countries like uh, Kenya, Angola, Congo, that is third world countries? What is your prediction? 2050. 2050? Uh, autonomous driving. Okay. What, what are some of the challenges that might hinder this technology in Africa? Or third world countries for that matter? Eh? What are you saying? Someone? Eh? Oh, infrastructure for the network. Road the network or, or ICT network? Huh? Both, both, both ICT and, uh, and, and the road network. Oh, both infrastructures. Okay, okay. Network and... Uh, okay. the, mentality, the mentality as well? Mentality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, backward, backward, backward mentality. Okay. Uh, are we already starting to see, for example, fully electric vehicles in Kenya? Have you seen any? 100% huh? no. electric? No, we don't have 100%. Uh, there, there's a Nissan, there's a Nissan I've been seeing around and it has the label 100% electric, but I'm not sure whether it's 100%. Nissan? Nissan Leaf. And Nissan Leaf, Nissan Leaf actually. Okay. Oh, there's one Tesla in Kenya? Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Was it paid for by Bitcoins? <laughs> That's another funny technology. <laughs> How comes this Tesla owner, what is his name? Elon Musk. How come Elon Musk really determines the value of Bitcoin. How comes his comments really affect the value of Bitcoin? That thing really is the main shareholder. Is the greatest the shareholder. shareholder. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a risk investment, but yes. Hey, they want to cry malware. It was sent to? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to pay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was two, three years ago, right? They want to cry malware. Wow. Anyway, technology. Fast moving, fast moving, fast moving. Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, um, sorry.
As I said earlier, the Huawei iMaster NCE really provides a centralized, a centralized uh, uh, and automated control of the network. So uh, this is a network automation and intelligence platform that integrates management, control, analysis, and AI functions. Uh, so in terms of management and control, iMaster allows you to manage and control traditional devices through traditional technologies such as CLI and SNMP. It also allows you to manage and control SDN, software-defined network, capable networks through a protocol we call network configuration protocol. And this protocol uses what we call the Young model, the Young model to exchange data between the devices and the iMaster NCE. Now, the iMaster NCE, of course, has what you call the management plane, the control plane, and also the analysis plane in order to be able to manage these devices and perform uh, uh, automation and uh, uh, analysis. So as you can see, you can be able to use traditional traditional methods such as CLI and SNMP as you use iMaster, but really the new protocol for network management, net configuration using Yang is used in SDN capable network devices. Other than that, it also uses uh, a technology called telemetry. Telemetry. It uses telemetry. And telemetry is also used to format data in a certain way. I'm going to tell you more about telemetry in a short while. OK, so now we want to look at net config and just understand how it operates. Net config. Now, the network configuration protocol provides network device management mechanism. So you can use netconf to add, modify, or delete configurations of network devices, and also to obtain configurations and status of the network. Generally, the netconf has three objects. The first one is the netconf client, then the netconf server, and the message. So you um you you manage devices like routers and firewalls and switches are what we call the netconf servers. Those are the servers. Then your iMaster NCE is the client. Then the message is what you exchange between the netconf server and the netconf uh, client. Normally this message is uh, formatted uh, or encoded using XML. How many of you have heard of XML? XML. So XML is just a, just a data formatting, data formatting uh, language that uses tags to define data. If you know HTML, then you know tags. So XML uses tags to format data and to pass them over. OK. OK, so advantages of, uh, of uh, NetConf and these advantages, we're also comparing them to SNMP and CLI. So why NetConf? One advantage is the interface type. So for NetConf, it's machine to machine interface, just like SNMP, just like SNMP. On the other hand, for CLI, it is one to one and it's man to machine interface, man to machine. Then operational efficiency. So the efficiency here is very high. Uh, SNMP, medium, CLI, low. Uh, so here, only one interaction is required for object operations. Operations such as filtering and batch, batch processing are supported. 
So we know SNMP also provides for version three, provides for batch processing. The CLI, no. Scalability. So proprietary protocols capabilities can be extended. You can be able to uh, uh, include proprietary protocols that can be monitored using NetConf. Uh, SNMP, you can't be able to do that and also uh, a CLI. Then transactions, so support transaction processing, such as trial running, rollback, errors. So you've done some configuration, you want to roll back to the original status. You can't be able to do that. And also configuration rollback. You can't be able to do that in SNMP. You can do, but on a limited scale on CLI. Secure transmission. So this one uses SSH, TLS, SOAP, HTTP, ETC to secure the data. SNMP only version three supports encryption. CLI to secure data, you can use SSH instead of using Telnet. Instead of using Telnet uh, to connect to your device, you can use SSH to provide security. So those are the advantages of NetConf. So typical NetConf operation, Uh, so, okay, there's an arrow there. I hope you can see it. There are two arrows. Two arrows. Two arrows. Mm. Okay, so uh, first things first. We have the iMaster NCE. You have your switch that you want to manage. Now, normally, uh, NetConf uses SSH secure shell to connect then it will send what we call an rpc an rpc is remote procedural call remote procedure rpc if you've learned about operating systems then you you know what an rpc is so here the RPC simply is the message that we want to send. We want to send this message to this guy. So the message is formatted using XML, XML version 1.0, encoding UTF-8. So these are what we call tags. These are what we call tags. A tag, a tag has that angle bracket and this angle bracket, a closing and an opening and a closing. Then whatever is in between is called an attribute or something, uh, not attribute, it's called the name or something. I can't remember very well. So for example, you can see here, uh, this one is called target. So normally we have an opening tag and we have a closing tag. The closing tag has uh, is preceded by a forward slash. So just like HTML, only that here you can be able to create what we call user-defined tags. So you don't have to use specific tags. You can use user-defined tags. Okay, so what we are sending is this configuration. This is the message really that we are sending. So this operation is to modify configuration. So this one, this one now is coming. This is the RPC reply. It's coming from the switch. So the switch is sending OK. OK meaning modified successfully. OK, then we have Yang. Uh, I've heard of this Yang some time back, but I've never been interested in looking at it. So this is the other time I'm meeting it, Yang. So Yang language stands for yet another next generation. So it's the data modeling language that standardizes NetConf data content. 
So Young model defines hierarchical structure of data can be used for netconf based operation. Modeling objects include configuration, status data, remote procedural calls, notifications, etc. So this allows a complete description of all data that is exchanged between the netconf client and the server. And the server. So a model, what is a model when we say that it's a data modeling language? What is a model? A model is an abstraction and expression of things, while a data model is an abstraction and expression of data features. So for example, this is a model, a person. Then this is a data model. We can be able to describe this person using their name, gender, height, etc. So this is a model, the router. This is the data model, interface, routing protocols, IP address, routing table, etc. Uh, when you can, please read uh, more on the instructions under this slide so that you can understand about Young Mo. Okay. So uh, a Young file is loaded on the netconf client such as the NMS or the SDN controller. Then the young file, the young file is used to convert the data into XML netconf messages. Are you still able to hear me? Dennis? Me, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. So the young file is used to convert data into XML format uh, before they are sent to the device. So let's see how that is done. So this is how the young file looks, up, looks like. Eh? So we are just modeling the data. Look how we are modeling the data. We are calling this list server, list server. Then we have an opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. Inside it, we have the following parameters, key, the value name, unique, value IP port. Then we have another one inside, leaf name, type string, leaf IP, type net. So this, this data can now be, you can see actually, for example, for the name, we can, we can say that the name is SNMP. IP is that, port is that. So this is the data. This is the young file. So both of them now can be combined into this XML file that can now be sent over the network. Uh, so server, close server. You can see IP, name, like that. So the same data, we're just sending the same data, this one here, this one. Yes, we are modeling it like this. Now you can see we have the name, SNMP, SMTP, the IP and the port number. So that's how we do it. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, when the young file is uh, received, it's need, uh, no, when the XML file is received, it needs to be converted to the young file, then the device will be able to extract the data from that young file. So just the opposite of what happened in the previous, in the previous slide. Okay, so now let's look at telemetry. We had said we will look at telemetry. Remember we said that when you're using um, NCE, iMaster, you can either use, ah, you, you will be using telemetry and also you'll be using netconf. Eh? So what is telemetry, telemetry? So telemetry is also called network telemetry. It is a technology that remotely collects data from physical and virtual devices at a high speed. Hmm. 
So devices periodically send interface traffic statistics, CPU usage, memory usage to collectors in push mode. In what? In push mode. So compared with traditional pool, pool mode. So the push mode provides faster and more real-time data collection. So how does telemetry really work? Now look at these two examples here. We have the traditional way of uh, sending trap messages. So this is when we are using SNMP. When you're using SNMP, then really uh, we are going to request for the statistics. On the NMS here, we configure eSight, for example. We configure eSight. We tell it after every two minutes, check. Check on the CPU usage of the router. So we're going to send a request. Request. Request CPU usage. Then uh, this uh, router is going to reply. This is the usage. Now, now, this is what we call pool mode because we are requesting. Then we get a reply. Problem with the pool mode is the time. Takes more than five minutes because most of the time you don't configure very short uh, check periods so that you don't overwhelm the device. Yeah? So that's sending and getting the feedback takes more than five minutes. On the other hand, when you use telemetry, when you use telemetry, we just want the device to subscribe, to subscribe to the CPU usage, uh, 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 CPU usage. And after it has subscribed, then automatically it's going to be sending the CPU usage after predetermined amount of time. For example, after every second. So we don't query anymore. You just subscribe, then you're going to be sending to us. You're just going to be sending to us. Uh, so subscription and push. So that's what we call push. Subscription and push. So you can see that this greatly enhances uh, network uh, reliability because we can be able to identify faults uh, earlier in our network. So that is the purpose of telemetry. To provide data collection at all levels, at the level of subseconds. Telemetry supports data collection at the level of subseconds. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that is the end. That is the end of this chapter. Can someone answer these questions? So take some time, take some time to discuss those two questions before we move forward. And also just as a summary, as a summary, we can either use we can either use CLI or web system, or we can use SNMP, or we can use I master Huawei I master and C to perform network management O and M operation and maintenance. Asante and